Hello, I'm Dr. Schultz, and here we are with another lightning round. I'm going to try to answer four questions in under 6.3 minutes. So here we go. Uh, this one's from Suzette in Florida. Dear Dr. Schultz, I've been told I will die in a few months. Sorry about that. Uh, Suzette, I have pulmonary hypertension with a result of... Uh, she's got a lot of diseases. Um, please help. I don't know what to do concerning this problem. The doctor want me to have a lung transplant. That sounds pretty serious, but I'm on the list and can't afford the procedure. Please help me. I'm having a hard time breathing. I've been on oxygen for the last two years. I have my friend to write me because I don't have uh, the strength to email. Uh, she'll use her email for me. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sue. Okay. What do you do? Everything. You're dying. They told you you're dying. If they're suggesting a lung transplant, uh, you're very close to death. Uh, you may be dead already. But if you're not, for anybody out here in this condition, it's always the incurables program. That's it. Do everything. Incurables program. Okay. Uh, this one's from Larissa in Los Angeles, California. Dear Dr. Schultz, my uncle has been diagnosed with colon cancer that has metastasized to his liver and stomach. He and my family all live in Brazil, and due to the bad news, I flew from California to Brazil to provide uh, nutritional support, according to your book. Although he is on board to participate in these natural remedies, my Brazilian family has put forth a brute force campaign sounds like Brazilians, to shut down my attempts at using alternative food-based treatments. As I am sure you are well aware, Brazil has a strong uh, culinary tradition of eating a healthy diet of animal products. I am very well of that. I, I live in Florida a lot, a lot of Brazilians here, uh, a lot of Brazilian steakhouses. Okay, your methods threaten not only my uncle's lifestyle, but my whole family's lifestyle. I like that word, threaten. That's Dr. Schultz. When you bring up my name, threaten should be right along with it. How do I deal with a breakdown in communication such as this one where old food traditions barricade alternative nutritional treatments? How do we get patients and family on board without scaring, offending, and threatening them? Uh, you don't. Okay, you got to scare them, offend them, and threaten them pretty much. My family was German. Okay, my mom was German, my dad was German. We had blood for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. It killed both my parents by age 55, and it almost killed me in my teenage years. Okay, I don't care about Brazilian tradition. I don't care about German tradition. I care about your uncle living, and I care about eating foods that are going to promote health. And if they think that that food will promote health, well, then so be it. Let's see what happens. But he has cancer, colon cancer. It's metastasized to his liver. I highly suggest a vegan food program. Look, you've got to be loving, but don't compromise. You got to be intense, but don't compromise. You got to love. You got to threaten lovingly. Um, uh, you, you'll have to figure it out. It's your karma, not mine. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry. We can't let him eat meat with colon cancer, with liver cancer, and it's probably metastasized throughout his body. The incurables program again. Okay, here's one from Bobby in Hot Springs, Arkansas. That used to be a nature cure center of the world. I've been there. I've been through the bathhouses. I've taken the cure. It's an amazing place. I know most of them are closed now because uh, hydrotherapy is not in. But boy, did it have its heyday. Kings and queens and presidents went there. Okay, dear Dr. Schultz, I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for your work. You are truly a blessing to so many people. Thank you. I'm 48-year-old male who used to work out quite a bit, but about three years ago I started feeling extreme pain all over my body that leads to a lot of fatigue. I was told I have fibromyalgia, um, blah, blah, blah. I notice, and I say blah, blah, blah because you don't need to know that part. I notice that if I do too much, I feel like I got the flu. That's fibromyalgia. It's my immune system. I, I want a life to live with my wife and grandkids, and it makes it hard with fibromyalgia. I got it. You know what? I'll give you a bottom line here because we're in the lightning round. Uh, every patient that I had, when they became a vegan, their fibromyalgia went away without any other treatment. And when they started eating meat, their fibromyalgia came back. 
Now, I'm not saying that's the total cure-all for everybody, but I always want to uh, underscore the importance of becoming a vegan with fibromyalgia. And then following all the basic programs, getting the nutrition in with an incredible, organic, healthy, vegan food program. At the same time, vegan seems to be the word of the day today. Um, at the same time, uh, getting in double doses of superfood. At the same time, boosting up your immune system. Don't worry, I know people will talk about autoimmune disease and all that. Ignore it. Focus on the good to eliminate the bad. Do all the detoxes and you'll be done with it. Every patient I had with fibromyalgia got rid of it. What's our time? 521. Five minutes and I'm still going. I got two minutes to answer here. Dr. Schultz, this is from, sorry, can't pronounce your name. It looks like S-R-D-J-A-N maybe, Miami, Florida. Dear Dr. Schultz, my mother has been suffering for the past year from symptoms that point to autoimmune disease. Here we go again. It's an autoimmune disease lightning round with occasional rheumatoid arthritis. Doctors can't really make a concrete diagnosis. Autoimmune, I told her as well as an, she also has an embolism. Okay, this is sounding scarier. I've been reading now about uh, how spirulina, chlorella, and vitamin D are great for immune deficiencies. People with MS, rheumatoid arthritis, you're right. I feel, I've been taking your superfood and I feel great. However, I've noticed that your superfood doesn't contain any vitamin D, and that's what this is about. Vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D. I'll say it again, because we all need to hear it. Vitamin D uh, that is used as a supplement is all synthetic, and in my book, it's all toxic. People are working on making healthy, clean, herbal, natural vitamin D, but no one's done it yet. All the vitamin D on the market is made from irradiated oils. They're taking oil and blasting it with radiation, and this is not good for you. You get your vitamin D from the sun, just exposing skin that has a light amount of oil on it. And I'm not talking copper joan here. I'm talking just your natural sweat. This is why you don't want to scrub yourself with soap too many times a day, because your natural sweat on your skin exposed to the radiation of the sun will help your body manufacture all the vitamin D you need in 10 minutes. That's how we get vitamin D. That's why vitamin D isn't in superfood. And I'm never going to put toxic, poisonous, man-made, synthetic, radiated oils in my superfood. Okay, that's the lightning round for today. Thank you for listening.